this is a house that looks totally ordinary at first, but I took a few glances at some of the pictures and there was a few things that kind of stuck out to me and made me realize that this is a perfect example of architecture that has like a, a bunch of little nuggets of awesome design qualities, a lot of cool details embedded throughout. As I said, I didn't fully dive deep into this house, uh, which is exactly what I want to do with this video. So it might be that at, at the end, I'm like, never mind, this was a pile of garbage. But I wanted to just go picture by picture talking about what I see, what I think is interesting, what makes it good, what makes it bad. And then at the end, we'll decide, you know, if it was indeed a piece of interesting architecture. Now, I do want to mention that this is going to be a longer form type of content. Usually I try to condense all my interesting points into a short five to eight minute video. But I felt that a lot of times uh, because doing that, I miss a lot of interesting points or even a lot of mundane points that at the end I feel are necessary to explain the architecture. So like I said, I want to try to just take my time with each of the images that we're going to look through. Now, of course, this house is called uh, Pergola House by Entopos Architects. Uh, I always have an issue understanding if I'm pronouncing it right. But hey, that's that's the problem you run into when you're talking about worldwide architecture. So this is located in Agios Nikolaos, Greece. Um, it's about 183 square meters. It's from 2023. And the reason that it's called Pergola House, um, just gonna take a wild guess here, is because there's a bunch of pergolas all around and that becomes like the prominent feature of the design, at least on the exterior. Now, I haven't jumped in uh, into all the images, so I don't know if some of this language is carried throughout the interior, but I'm hoping for the sake of the name of the architecture and just for the, the coolness of it, that there are some sort of like pergolaic features. And that's totally just a word I made up right now. I might get that on a shirt or something, pergolaic. <clears throat> So right off the bat, it doesn't look like a totally interesting home. It's not totally boring, uh, right? But it's not like super flashy in any way. There's some things that catch my eye and this is the structure that pops out on these sides. Now over here, it looks almost like a, a pergola that hasn't fully been finished. Uh, I don't pretty sure that this is not structural, right? Just based off of this image, it looks like it's a design element just to match what's going on down here. But I really don't see any purpose for it. Uh, there's a nice rounded corner here, which I enjoy. I enjoy when architecture has little curved edges like this. Um, pretty nice pool down here at the front. Like I said, nothing flashy. Probably the thing, the thing that pops out the most besides the fact that there's a pergola and some interesting shadows is a choice of color that they've chosen for the steel structure. And I gotta say, um, you don't ever see this color being used, right? Uh, I don't know what the significance of it is, but I think that adding this color to the palette of the wood and the concrete is, is a really nice touch. Now, the more that I look at it, the more it becomes apparent that that same color is seen here in the pool. I don't know if that's the reason why they're kind of referencing the, the water. It's just part of the composition. They just randomly decided to go with this blue, but I do really dig it, to be honest with you. I really appreciate the color blue. And over here, we have what seems to be like the downspout of a gutter, so we probably have a drain up here and it drains here, uh, and it's all using that same blue, and I really, really enjoy that. I just almost wish now that this grass was blue. It would have been super cool. They would have figured out a way to make the grass blue. That's kind of a, just a half joke, by the way. I'm really trying hard when I look at these images to make sure I don't miss anything, because I don't want to come back to these images unless like I'm like, oh, that's right. Uh, there was this thing that happened over here and then I talk about it, but I really want to take my time to make sure that I don't miss anything. But honestly, I think I've pretty much exhausted uh, what's going on here. I do see some slats over here, some horizontal slats. So more of the motif of the pergola that's popping out in little moments, but I think that's it. Hopefully I don't have to come back. Now, this is another shot uh, of the same space. Uh, I don't think there's anything new that we can add to this shot. So we'll just go ahead and skip over to the next one. 
And now we're inside the house. So we were probably standing somewhere around here when we saw that last picture. And uh, now we're looking at the interior. Uh, I do enjoy that some of these rounded corners were brought to the interior and we now have what I think, no, I thought it was a sliding, like a pocket door, but no, this is an actual hinge door that goes floor to ceiling, which is a nice touch. There's, it's pretty interesting that there's three floor materials going on here. There might be a fourth one or even a fifth one back here. Uh, but I think that the exterior is one and then this one matches this one. And then the right below the bed, there seems to be this wood laminate or whatever finish this is over here. Uh, it, it is an interesting palette because when you look at the outside, it's pretty neutral with the exception of that blue structure. And then over here, they just got a little wild with things, right? You have the white walls and the white ceiling, the curved edges of this of this uh, wall here. And then all of a sudden, we have one type of wood, two type of wood, possibly three over there. We have two types of finishes on the floor and the exterior. And it's starting to get a little overwhelming, but I'm not mad at it. I question why they decided to make this flooring transition from this point to this point. Again, there's always a write-up included in these uh, in these projects, and so I plan on reading that write-up maybe towards the end of the video, or if we like run into something that's like so crazy and I need answers now, I'll just jump into there and read it. But as of right now, I just question the choice of materials on the floor. Like, why are you doing these big changes here? Also, what's going on here? I, I met, you know, I don't understand what these two elements are. So lots of questions at the moment, and we're going to be looking for answers like some detectives pretty soon. I want to say something about that. Uh, it's a really important thing that I want to say, like so probably the most important thing that you've ever heard in your life. But I want to make sure that I, I hold off on that because I know there's an, a better image of this moment here. Now, I got to say, this is like when I mention these uh, architectural nuggets, these this bag of architectural goodies that this project is, this this is definitely one of them. There's so much going on right here. This is look this spiral staircase. They could have just made it so that this touched the floor. But no, they put it on a circle pedestal, which doesn't even match any of the palette of the stairs or the surroundings. It's concrete like you see the walls are around here, but it's a darker shade of concrete or maybe plaster, I don't know. But I think it's such a cool detail that they did that. Again, no idea why they would do that. But I mean, it's just so cool that they take this spiral staircase and mount it on a pedestal so that it becomes like this object in the space. And then the design of the stair itself is so amazing. This is actually pretty interesting. I don't know how the top floor functions yet, but they could have probably worked pretty hard to rotate this stair so that it doesn't block you like as you're approaching it here. Instead, it rotates in such a strange way that it completely blocks your view to the beginning of the steps, right? So what is that about? I have no idea. Like, why didn't they open it up? It almost becomes like it's like blocking you. It doesn't want you to access it. So the only way that you would be able to access it comfortably is from this small angle here. No idea what that's about, but I thought I just thought it'd be interesting to mention. And then you have like this wooden grate here that just apparently seems to be like uh, some sort of aesthetic finish, right? Like, why would they they do that? I don't know. Nonetheless, it's such an interesting stair and I'm a, a real big fan of it. But when we run into the plans, I kind of want to take hopefully I remember to take a moment to look at the landing up here and see why on earth this looks the way that it does. Now here at the pergola house where we have an infinite array of pergolas, we continue that. So right behind us is the pool. We're just walking through more pergolas, more of that blue. We have a little opening here. That's probably uh, like a, there's probably a balcony up here. And, and this opening is like very reminiscent of like a castle where you can just kind of peek through over. Curious as to if there's going to be any cool views from here. Hopefully they have like a picture of this vantage point so we could see. But we'll standing there, we'll be able to see all the pergolas of this house and all the interesting shadows. The interesting thing here to mention, though, is that the concrete column at this point, it's like the same. You have the same rounded edges, but this one's like an oblong like oval. And again, I question the the certain decisions like why is that there? Like if you look at this column here, it's a square. And then you look at this one here 
and it's a circle. And then you look at this here and it's like a blend of those two. Like, is that really why? Is is it because this plus this equals that? Uh, there seems to be no other reason why they did that. Something that kind of bugs me right here is how the structure of this column here doesn't fall perfectly on this ledge. It's just hanging off a little bit. That's kind of annoying, you know? Why Why did that happen? Is that a mistake or is there a, a, a reason for that? I think it's really neat how the shadow creates this awesome textured pattern on the wall. Like it's kind of boring here on the floor, but the fun things about shadows is that they're very dynamic. They move around as the, as the day goes on. But the cool thing is that this pattern here is so interesting. I would love to have like a, a camera place here and then a time lapse of this area just moving around on, on a 12 hour period just to see how cool all the shadows are moving along and the plants and everything. We're getting closer to that shot that I wanted to talk about. I think there is a better picture. So remember, there's something very important I'm going to say about this condition right here. But but this is pretty neat right here, like some sort of happy accident where now you have the reflections and the shadows and it's all creating like this trippy situation with the light bouncing and the shot and the shadows bouncing. Really cool moment right here. See, this is exactly what I was talking about before, the cool texture that's created over here. And now from this point, like whoever the photographer is, they did a, a freaking awesome job of showing like how cool this space is right here. I just want this to be present like everywhere in the project. But again, still no answer as to what's going on with this column. This house should have probably been called instead of Pergola House. It should have been called like the House of the Strange Column Orientations, but that doesn't sound quite as nice. See what I mean? I mean, look at this, like what what exactly is going on here? No idea. But it really does add to the beauty and uniqueness of the space. I just don't think it's like justified that it's only an aesthetic purpose why they did that. Now, this shot here is just more of the same stuff that we've been looking at, but I just wanted to include it in case I do miss something and you guys see it like just, you know, feel free to add a comment for it. But actually, actually, you know what? I did miss something. So I thought that this column was offset, you know, incorrectly on this path. And no, it's actually lined up perfectly on the edge of it. It's just that behind we have a downspout. So it kind of looked in that other image like the column was just hanging off a little bit. I'm like, why would they do that? But see, that's why it pays to spend a little extra time just looking around, finding clues. But with that, I think honestly, we've exhausted every detail that we possibly could pick up from this image here. Another cool shot of this stair here that just makes it makes me appreciate it even more. I mean, it's not only a blend of materials, but it's also a blend of shapes. So like this shot on its own, like if you just squint your eyes a little bit, it kind of looks like an abstract painting. I mean, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, I wish they could just turn this into like one of those 3D collage paintings and just place it like hang it somewhere on the wall. I mean, look at this, the way that this angle here blends with this handrail here in this wall that's like not even attached for whatever reason it's like it i mean it's so freaking cool it's so it's so sculptural it still makes me wonder like why didn't they flip this stair around so that like you could it just seems like this is such a weird place to place the the you know the opening for the stair i don't know we're gonna have to look at the plan hopefully i don't forget that I mean, look at this, just another freaking amazing shot of this stair. I honestly love it. I think it's like one of the coolest stairs I've seen in a while. Now, to add to the awesomeness of this house, I mean, just look at how strange this bathroom is. It's like a deconstructed bathroom where like you just merged the bedroom and the bathroom together into one space and then opened it up. And I just think this is so freaking cool, honestly. The more time the more time you spend looking at this, like the more strange it gets. I mean, you have this counter attached to the wall for some reason, and then this is not even offset. I think this is like at an angle. I mean, it's just such a, a strange room. Like nothing makes sense. Like this mirror pops up through the top. Nothing seems to be like balanced or aligned in any way. It's just like fun. It's just like a, a fun bathroom. Not a, a fan, though, of the craftsmanship uh, of how they put this here. It just eh, they didn't do like a, a good job there. But but otherwise, it's a it's a very strange place to be in. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, which is this spot right here, the spot that I've been referencing in the whole video. 
there really isn't anything actually that I want to say. I, I that that kind of just started as a joke and I took it a little bit too far. I was only going to say that I thought it was a cool gesture the way that this floats just right above the pool. Um and it makes for such a sick spot to just like either skateboard off into the pool or just do some nice flips off of this ledge. I don't know. I just thought it was cool. Such a nice little detail that they added. Very expensive detail. And ah, the plans, the plans. Here we can hopefully get some answers as to the questions that we had, like these Dorito columns. Why why do, did they do this? There seems to be no reason why. And then you have this like a uh, strange Dorito wall here, uh, a dining table that doesn't seem to work properly. Everything's like at a strange angle, like a strange angle. It's so bizarre. Like, look, they just what what is going on here? The, it's so funny. I'm telling you, like this house wants to screw with my head because like in the pictures, everything looks so normal. Like it's everything looks so like not this. I mean, look, look at how bizarre everything is here. You have like like this line isn't even straight. It's like slightly angled the shower for some reason is angled like they could have just made that straight, but they wanted to add a little window there and that took precedence over a comfortable bathroom. Now this is bathroom this that we were looking at before with the strange angle is starting to make sense. They just wanted to screw with us. They were like, you know what? We're going to just make this a weird floor plan. None of the wall, none of the, like the lines are straight at all. They're just weird angles that come from seemingly nowhere. Now I really want to read what this project is about. Like, what the heck were they doing? It's so funny because from the exterior, everything looks all nice and quiet and organized. And then on the inside, it's just like bizarre. It's it's kind of like, well, me sometimes. You look at me and I'm like, chill and then inside i'm like ah. and this is exactly like the feeling that i'm getting looking at this plan and i mean look what i was talking about the stair so the stair it starts here and look what i'm talking about the stairs so the stair that we were looking at this is where you go into the stair it's such an awkward spot like why do they do that you're coming in from like the bathroom or the pantry it's like a secondary point of circulation so this is a main this is the main entrance to the house right here so I guess it's not secondary, it just feels secondary because there's this couch in the way. Like, why is that couch there? Couldn't they have designed this space a little bit differently? Like, did, I don't know, did did this have to be this way? Because yeah, you come in through this door, you go this way and then boom, that's the entrance to your stair. But it's kind of like, oh, it's so tight. It, I, I just, I feel like honestly, they should have X'd that idea and just made it so that you entered through here. But there's this column that's placed right here for some reason. I mean, did they need this column? This floor plan looks tiny. Why, why do they need all this structure here? What's going on with this house? And then obviously on the second floor, it's apparent that, you know, when you come in, you come into this little landing. I mean, if they would have just done it so that you come this way and then you land over here, but this is open to below, but they could have just made it so that I don't know. I, I feel like there there could have been more thought. You know, the thing about architecture, sometimes when you're just looking at pictures and plans, you don't get the full idea. There's always reasons why and people don't just do things for whatever reasons. But I don't know. I feel like that this floor plan, like all of this and this, it could have been thought out a little bit better. I just don't understand what's the deal with all this like strange stuff. I'm telling you, man, this house, they it's called the Pergola House by Entopos Architects or Entopos and Topos. And it is called the pergola house, but the pergola is the least of the thing that you want to talk about when you talk about this house. You want to talk about the bizarre nature of the floor plan. You want to talk about these strange columns. Like there's so much other things I, I, I have questions for. The pergola is like the, I don't care about the pergola now. And then, yeah, I don't, I don't like looking at sections because these sections are always just, you know, they don't ever answer anything, especially when you have a plan like this, there's really nothing interesting about these sections. They do have this cool detail, but I really don't want to dive into this right now. I will take my time at a later time to just look at it for myself because it, it does really look interesting. And I love when they place uh, details in projects because for some reason, details in architecture are like the secret sauce. Like architects don't want you to know what the heck is going on inside. Maybe it's like for liability reasons, you know, they don't want to put it out there. So then you copy it and then you try to sue them or whatever. So this is like a rare site, honestly.
I think it's cool and there's definitely some cool stuff going on in there. We'll, we'll check that out, not in this video. I'm gonna just check it out on my own. But now let's read a little bit of what it says here. It says that the introverted plot of the 380 square meter, a uh, plot of 380 square meters used to host an existing building of 80 square meters. The client's brief included an extension to augment the plant size, adjusting to the needs of the family of four, as well as appropriate outdoor space and pool located near Agios Nicolaus, Eastern Crete. The structure encounters intense heat during summertime, which is considered a cared for during the design, which is considered and cared for during the design process. Man, I cannot read today. Uh, transformation is mainly achieved through the careful addition of steel frame structure and pergolas extending to the outdoor spaces. No, 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 no. That's not how transformation is done. I don't agree with that at all. Transformation is done because this plan is just wild and it just, it's not the per, I'm telling you, it's not the pergola. It's just the fact that you're completely stepping from this like exterior calm space to this interior like crazy fun space. It says the latter, while functioning as a bioclimatic design tool, offers spaces of different qualities depending on the season, semi-outdoor spaces where the pergola is watertight and offers shade in the summertime months, in the summer months. During wintertime, these spaces allow sunlight to enter the residence and north-south permeability is allowed for optimum air circulation in and around the house all year long. The vocabulary of the extension proposal is expressed through a triptych of interdependent design decisions surrounding the existing building at the northeast of the site, the load-bearing structure of which is completely maintained. Triptych. The vocabulary of the extension proposal is expressed through a triptych? Triptych? Doesn't that mean like three paintings? What does that mean here? I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about. I wish I could understand that. Firstly, a solid volume is placed on the northwest side of the plot, creating a, the master bedroom while defining the area of the pool and the main main outdoor space of the house on the south. Referencing the contemporary building style in Crete, this new volume matches the architectural simplicity of the existing building, both in structure and finishes, which include natural paints. The second steel frame addition is made on the roof of the existing house with a purpose to the host to host an end suite bedroom with office space a sliding wall offers privacy as it isolates the bedroom from the rest of the house making the office space comfortable comfortably functional for both children and family a variety of views can be found at this space thanks to the volumes orientation okay but i want to know about the architecture like come on tell me something about what's going on with the crazy architecture Aha, so these exposed steel frame structures host wood planks and offer a permeable shading solution while not concealing the blue Mediterranean sky. Uh, I thought I was going to talk about the blue structure. All right, well, there you have it. There's really nothing else to say about this project, except it's a, a really cool project that left me with more questions than answers. But like I said, a lot of goodies, a lot of uh, architectural nuggets scattered throughout that plan, man. That was a, a jump scare, to be honest with you, when I saw that, when I saw like how well contained and chill the exterior was and all of a sudden like this just jumps out it's at you with all its wackiness and craziness and like 180 degree doors and you know all this other fun stuff that's going on it really kind of blew my mind so uh such a fun project for the pergola house thank you and topos architects for designing this wonderful uh project and thank you for the clients for funding it man it's a really fun cool project if only all architecture was this fun and like neck breaking.